There are some critics who say that maybe the Prophet attributed the Quran though he was the author because he wanted fame, status, glory as well as leadership. According to Michael H. Hart, he writes in his book, The Hundred Most Influential Persons in the History of Humankind. And he analyzes all the human beings from Adam, peace be upon him, till the present time. And undisputedly, he puts Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, as number one. As being the most influential person in the history of humankind. So if you wanted to become a leader, he didn't have to claim that the Quran was from God, if he actually was the author. And Michael H. Hart, he gives reasons for each person, why did he give him number one, number two, number three, etc. And at the end of the biography he says that it was the indisputable secular and religious influence of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, that makes him the undisputable number one person to have the most influence in human history. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, if he wanted glory, fame, power, leadership, he was so eloquent. He had all the qualities. He did not have to falsely attribute the Quran to Almighty God. He had all the abilities. And if we analyze logically, any person who wants power, glory, leadership, fame, status, along with him is attached good food, fancy clothes, magnificent places, monumental palaces, guards, etc. But if we see the lifestyle of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he mend his own clothes, he repaired his own shoes, he milked the goat, and he did his own household work. He sat on the floor and ate. When he went to the marketplace, he didn't have any colorful guards. He was an example of simplicity and humbleness. And anyone who invited him, even the poor people, he used to accept their invitation and he used to eat whatever was served to him. So much so that his enemies, they pass a remark, which is mentioned in the Quran, in Surah Tawbah, chapter number 9, verse number 61. Oh, he listens to everyone. His enemies, they were angry. What kind of a person is this? He listens to each and every one, even the poor people. And there are many instances and occasions which are recorded in history and in the Ahadith. And one such instance is there was a representative from the pagan Arabs by the name of Uduba. And he comes to the Prophet and says that we will give you all the wealth in Arabia, make you the richest man of Arabia. We will even make you the leader. If you want, we'll make you the king. Only thing we want from you is that you should stop spreading this message that there is one God. If the Prophet wanted leadership, if he wanted to become the king, he would have accepted this offer very easy. There are several examples. We have the example that when the pagan Arabs, they told his uncle Abu Talib that ask an effort to give up the message of universal brotherhood, of the oneness of God. He replies to his uncle, that even if they put the sun in my right hand and the moon in my left hand, I will not stop my mission. I will not stop spreading this message until the day I die or whatever Allah wills. There was a time when his son Ibrahim, he died and it coincided with an eclipse. So immediately the people said, ah, this is a sign from God. The sun is mourning because a person has died, the son of Muhammad, peace be upon him. Immediately the Prophet replied and he said that the sun and the moon, they are signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They do not eclipse because of the birth or the death of any human being. If he wanted fame and power, it was a very good opportunity. He could have said, yes, 
because my son died, we see the heavens are mourning. But he didn't do that because he's a truthful person.